I'm Aki Martinson. Join me as I use a Raspberry Pi to build an IoT sprinkler timer that I can control from anywhere. <laughs> now what do we have here? A typical suburban sprinkler timer. You control it by inserting or pulling out sheet metal tabs for the hours and days you want. Very retro. This one though doesn't work in anything but manual mode. That's okay. I've wanted to install an outdoor general purpose computer at this corner of the house for a while. We could do this with a Raspberry Pi. There's open source software called, naturally enough, Open Sprinkler that we can run on it, which opens the valve with one of the Pi's GPIO pins and provides a web interface, mobile apps, and all the rest of it. We have mains power available from the original installation, so we need a power supply that can run on that and provide 5 volts DC to the Pi. The Pi's GPIO pins can't drive the sprinkler solenoid valve directly, but we can use an off-the-shelf board that comes with a relay and all the usual input features, opto-isolation, snubber network, etc. That relay will switch mains power on and off. Now the solenoid valve needs 24 volts AC, so we'll feed that switched power to a transformer. We could use this original one, but uh, let's not. Let's set it all up on the bench to prove it works. Because I've got live mains power somewhat loosely rigged up on the bench, I'm being very careful and using an isolation transformer. Yeah, not bad. It works. This is, believe it or not, the B Plus model of the Raspberry Pi 1, which I've obviously had sitting around for a long time. It doesn't have onboard Wi Fi. That's okay though, because this is the enclosure that I got from Amazon, and it is aluminum. So we can't mount the antenna inside this box, it has to go outside the box. And for that, we need a USB to Wi-Fi adapter that has a connectorized antenna, like this one with an SMA connector right here. This also came from Amazon, but uh, getting it to work is up to you. That process is frustrating and boring to watch, so I'm going to skip showing it. But here's the configuration that I eventually got working. Now to test open sprinkler over the new Wi-Fi adapter. I'm turning it on for 5 seconds with the mobile phone app. The buzzing you hear is the solenoid. Okay. Now, let's get all this stuff installed into the box. I'm going to be mounting it in this configuration high up under the eaves of the roof so the lid opens down. I'm going to plumb in conduits for power and signal in the bottom for obvious reasons. So let's get started. Now, I need to make some kind of a mounting plate so I can attach all the components to it, do all the wiring outside, and drop it into the box in one piece. I can use this. It says here it's aluminum. It's time to measure once and cut twice. It fits! Next I'll drill and tap a whole lot of holes. Now for a nice extra feature. I want a toggle switch in this box as in the original timer that I can use to manually turn the sprinklers on or off for when I'm working outside and don't have a phone or for when the smart part of this device fails, which, let's be honest, it will. I 
I'm making a little sheet metal box to mount that switch and house the relay board. Everyone's making table mounts for porta bands like this one. They're great. I put this together in an afternoon and I've gotten a lot of use out of it. It does have a limitation though. Yep, there it is. Now I'm going to use some letter punches to label the metal. If I'm honest, I've been looking for an excuse to use these. Off camera, I drilled some holes in the side and installed grommets to protect the wire. Here's a little test, and yeah, sharp eyes will notice I left out the isolation transformer this time. Do as I say, not as I do, am I right? Oops, forgot to add the signal wires to the relay board. Perfect. That's the homemade bomb look I was going for. Time to modify the enclosure. I know I suggested earlier that I was going to use two conduits, one for power in and the other for the wires going out to the solenoid, but I decided to run them through the same conduit for convenience. This is what they call a number 5 O-ring with a 3 8 OD and a quarter inch ID. Now for the outdoor installation. I've been meaning to paint the house anyway and change the color while I'm at it. This is a good opportunity to do that. And this is the color I've chosen. London Fog. Ah, yes. How appropriate. Needless to say, the breaker is turned off while I'm doing this. These white things are lizard eggs, by the way. Welcome to Florida. 
They must have gotten in through this defunct elbow fitting on the end of the box. I want to use this port to let out the solenoid wires anyway, so first I need to replace the elbow with something more suitable. Unfortunately, turning this elbow out means taking the box off the wall altogether. Now, I'm going to attach the box to the wall under the roof here, and connect it via conduit to the box that supports this camera and security light. Here I'm just eyeballing where it will fit and how much conduit I need. I made this kit for all my crimp wire terminals and the associated tools. This is a flambeau organizer box that I modified with Kaizen foam for the tool insert and a lot of 3D printed little bins to increase the resolution of the connector storage. I'll put a link in the description to a blog post where I give more details about this and where you can download the 3D models if you'd like to make something similar for yourself. I'm crimping on these spade lugs because I don't like bare wire and the type of terminal strip I'm using. This is more secure. You may notice I've done some more detail painting in the meantime, around the box and on the short piece of conduit here. Because it's outdoors, we have to use a GFI outlet, and the wires supplying the camera and sprinkler controller go on the load side.
I'm connecting the solenoid to the wires I ran down the conduit with splice connectors that have built-in heat shrink. This red seal came with the enclosure. Now's the time to install it, since the electronics are going in next. I put the Raspberry Pi on higher standoffs. I didn't like how the USB power cable was binding against the switch enclosure, and this way I can easily plug in an HDMI cable if I want to get video output from the Pi. to test my work. There's quite a few blinking lights here. That's a good sign. Let's test it in manual mode using the switch. The plumbing here is a bit leaky, but it'll do for now. Success! Now to button this thing up, go inside, log on to the Open Sprinkler administrative web page, and try it for real. Here we go. Yes! Fantastic, it works. Of course, the software doesn't just allow me to turn the sprinklers on and off. I can schedule it to work automatically, get the weather report from the internet and adjust the watering appropriately, and so forth. I'll play with that in due time, but for now, I'm very pleased with how well it all works. And there it is. One residential sprinkler system leveled up. Hope you liked it.